as I walked through the church this morning and I, from various people, heard all of the needs. There's such a need for God. There's such a need for His power. There's such a need for His peace. There's such a need for healing. There's such a need for Him to carry us one more step. Sometimes we just need to take one more step. Just one more step. And He gave me a word. And the title of my message is, You Shall Be Whole. You shall be whole. Circumstances in our life, situations, things that happen, pain, tries to rob pieces of our heart, pieces of our faith. But the Lord, I believe he wants you to know that you shall be made whole. And if nobody told you this morning, I'm proud of you. Because you got up. You decided to serve him. And you walked through those doors. Despite what's going on. Despite what you're facing. You said, I'm going to get in the presence of God. And I know that's not easy. Some days just aren't easy. And you chose to come and worship the Lord. So if no one told you today, I'm proud of you. For making that choice. Mark chapter 5 starting in verse 25. Mark chapter 5 starting in verse 25. I'm going to read a big chunk of scripture. But I wanted you to get the whole picture. Says a certain woman. Which had an issue of blood 12 years. And had suffered many things of many physicians. And had spent all that she had. And had nothing bettered. But rather grew worse. When she had heard of Jesus. Came in the press behind. And touched his garment. For she said. If I may touch his clothes. I shall be whole. And straight away, the fountain of her blood was dried up. And she felt in her body that she was healed of that plague. And Jesus, immediately knowing in himself that virtue had gone out of him, turned him about in the press and said, Who touched my clothes? And his, and his disciples said unto him, Thou seest the multitude thronging thee, and sayest thou, Who touched me? And he looked around about to see her that had done this thing. And the woman, fearing and trembling, knowing what was done in her, came and fell down before him and told him all the truth. And he said unto her, Daughter, Thy faith has made thee whole. Go in peace and be whole of thy plague. You shall be made whole. You shall be made whole. I don't know what you're facing this morning. I don't know what's been going on in your heart. Sometimes our, even our spouse or our closest friend or our family members don't know the depths right. of the things that are going right. on in our hearts. Sometimes we don't even <laughs> know right. the depths of the things and the needs that we have in our hearts. But the master knows. The master knows what you had need of. He knew that you were going to be sitting here this morning. He knew that he spoke to my heart to bring you a word that this morning, not tomorrow, but this morning, you shall be made whole. Yes. Yes. And what I love about this woman is she heard that Jesus was coming. She believed 
what he could do. She pressed and she received it. See, it, she heard it. She believed it. She pressed and she received it. See, there's something in our relationship with God that we need to do as believers. We can't just sit back. See, God already did what he had to do when he sent Jesus to Calvary. And he already granted us access by the blood of Jesus Christ. But sometimes when life gets hard, and I don't take away from when life gets hard. Because we have real emotions and real things and real pain and, real, and it's real, real. It gets real, real. But sometimes when we get in that place, we tend to think that God's just going to meet us there. And you know what? Sometimes he does. But other times he, wanna, he wants us to get up in his power. Yeah, that's it. Amen. That's it. Get up in his power to believe the word of God, to believe what he has said, to press beyond the press, and to receive what he died to give us. But she had a place in that relationship, and we do too. But sometimes it can get so hard in the press that we tend not, we tend to just sit there. But God, help us to press. Yeah. Help us to believe you despite what it looks like, despite what we feel like. Because feelings lie. That's right. Amen. Our emotions lie. Yeah. The own voice of our mind lies. But we need to press beyond that and believe the word of God today. We are people that stand upon the word of God. And I believe there's things in my heart. God, make me whole. Yes. Yeah. Make me whole. Because when we feel like we're lacking something, we become vulnerable to the enemy. When we feel unsatisfied in areas of our life or we doubt things that God, God, maybe we haven't seen God do yet, we become vulnerable to the lies and the plots of the enemy to steal from us and to get us off track. But I'm here this morning to say if you walked in the doors of this church, the Holy Spirit wants you to know in whatever area you are lacking and whatever need you have need of, he's going to make you whole. He's going to make you whole. But you have a part to play in it. So let's press this morning to believe God and what he has to say. I want you to see yourself in this woman. I love the parables. I'm a big fan of the Old Testament too because I love the characters. And I love being able to see. They were men and women of God just like us. They went through real life situations. But they served a real God. And they believed God. And they weren't perfect. Bless the Lord. The Lord put that in there. To see that they weren't perfect. And I, but we serve a perfect God. We serve a perfect God. And our, this character, she's a woman. A woman with an issue of blood. So I want you to intertwine your life. See your life as this woman. This woman heard of a man. Before he even got to where she was at. She was hearing of a man named Jesus that was still in storms. Yeah. See, it's easy for us to believe for someone else. Right, right. Come on. Come on. Yeah. I can believe that, that God can still the storm in Troy's life. But sometimes when I'm in the storm, I have a hard time believing that God in the midst of my storm. Right. But she heard of a man that was calling the disciples to the other side. Maybe you're that man or woman today that God said, let's go to the other side. And you've been walking it out. You've been walking what God set out. And there's a storm that hit you. And we, and we begin to get troubled in our spirit and feel like we're perishing. But God stilled the storm. He spoke peace to the storm. He rebuked the winds. And she heard that he was rebuking winds. She heard of a man that was still in creation. She heard of Jesus. 
and she knew her problem. Right. She knew her need. But then she didn't even just hear of a, of a God that could still storms. She heard of a Jesus that was delivering demons. Yes. See, there was a, a journey that Jesus was on. But in his journey on earth, he was working. Hallelujah. He was working. And he's still working today. Yes. He's still the God that will still your storm. And he's still the God that will deliver you from whatever torment and taunting spirit that has been plaguing your mind. See, he comes up, up, upon this demoniac who was wearing no clothes and who was amongst the tombs and he was tormented day and night. And I don't know about you, but I've been through seasons in my life, in my walk with the Lord, where I have been tormented right. day right. and night. Day and night. But Jesus seen the need of this man. And this man was dwelling. See, he, this man chose to make his dwelling a permanent place of residence where he reside amongst the tombs. He chose this place of death. You know, we, we can choose a place of death, even as believers. And we can choose to make it our dwelling place where we reside in our hearts. But whom the sun sets free is free indeed. And you don't have to reside in that place of torment and that place of death. But I feel like there was a deep cry in this man beyond what anybody else could see. Because Jesus seen his need. And he went to meet him there. Everyone else probably would have said this is a helpless case. This is a hopeless case. And I'm sure when I was stooped in addiction and the thing, I mean, I had people literally tell me that I was not going to make it out, that I was destined to be in that position. But thank God for the men and women of God. Thank God for my mom who didn't stop believing, who didn't stop believing that Jesus could deliver and that his arm was not too short to deliver. So God shows up in the midst. I mean, this was probably an ugly situation. He was cutting himself yes. day and night, naked in the tombs. Wow. That's an ugly state. Yes. Amen. But God said, no, 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 no. There's nothing that is too hard right. for me right. to do. Wow. And maybe you even find yourself in your own heart. You can listen, I can see some ugly in me. Yeah, right, right, right. Some things of death in me. That God, He's not ashamed to be called your God. Yeah. See, He died for those things on Calvary. And Jesus saw this man from afar off. Maybe you feel like your situation is too afar off. But he's seen it. And he came to him and he commanded the unclean spirit to come out. And this man was clothed in his right mind. God, clothe us in our right mind this morning. Clothe our minds in the word of God and the truth of God's word. So she heard that he was still in storms. She heard that he was a delivering God. So as he got closer to her, she was hearing of all these things that he was doing. And right before he comes up, I'm setting a stage for you. Because I want you to see God was on the move. And sometimes we can see God moving in Robert's life and God moving in Hannah's life and God moving in each person's life, Sabrina's life, God moving. And we can be like, God, I'm still here. I'm still here. Why am I still here? And I see you moving in those situations and the enemy will 
come to taunt you and tell you that God has passed over you and God hasn't seen you and maybe you sinned and maybe you messed up too much or maybe you, but God is setting this stage for you. Yes, thank you, Lord. God is making his way. Yes. And he's here today to tell you, you shall be made whole. Yes. And right before he comes upon this woman with the issue of blood, there was a man named Jairus that came and ran to Jesus, who was an elder in the church. And I don't know about you, but the, the enemy has used this lie on me. Right. That... God will answer the pastor's cry, mm -hmm. but he won't hear mine. Mm -hmm. You ever come in and the pastor seems like they're on like this heavenly cloud and you're like, but you know what? You never know what the pastor, we have to put our, I'll just tell you this from a preacher's point of view. We have to put our stuff on the back burner. And say, God, use us anyway. Use us in our brokenness. Use us in our hurt. Use us in our pain. You never know what the person that stands up here is going through when they preach the word of God. But I've heard the enemy has told me that before. He said, oh, he'll, he'll hear such and such cry, but he's not going to hear you cry. You've been praying that same prayer for 12 years and God still has on your behalf. But look at Pastor Matt. He's meeting all his needs. The enemy will use that to get us to doubt God. But God wasn't going to pass this woman by. He wasn't. But as soon as Jairus came to the feet of Jesus and said, my daughter is at the point of death Please come to her. Jesus was in the need meeting business. But not just for one person. He was meeting the needs of the disciples. He was meeting the needs of the demoniac man. He was going to meet the need of Jairus' daughter. But he still seen the woman. <laughs> he still seen the woman. And I remember I have a personal testimony with the scripture about Jarius' daughter. Because I was the dorm um, Bible college RA and we would have these prayer meetings, powerful prayer meetings. But we had like 35 girls on the floor. And you would think in Bible college, you know, everybody's gung-ho to go pray. No, there was like five of us. Five out of 35 girls. And I had a burden for these girls. I was these girls. I seen. I had a heartbeat that the Lord birthed in me for these girls. But they just, just weren't getting it. Like, and I, was, I felt broken. I, and then I said, well, Lord, what did I do? What did I do? Come on. What did I do wrong? Where did I go wrong? It was like they were like my kids. Like, and I was like, Lord, where did I go wrong? What should I say? Have you ever felt like that before? Where did I go wrong on the job? Where did I go wrong in my family? What am, what am I doing wrong? Did I do something? And you know what? God allowed Jarius' daughter to die to bring glory to him. And Jarius ran to Jesus. And Jesus said, she's not dead, but she's just sleeping. Hallelujah. And the Lord spoke that to my heart about that girl's dorm floor. Angela, it's not dead. Mm. I'm on the move. Mm. She's, they're just sleeping. Right, right. They're just sleeping. Yeah. But God is a God that can resurrect yeah. the dead. That can wake up those that are spiritually sleeping. Yes, Lord. God can raise up your situation. Wow. He is the resurrection wow. and he is the life. And he can raise up whatever you think is dead. God is able to raise it up. It doesn't have to be a person or it can be a person. It can be something in your heart that has died. Then God can resurrect and he can raise up. And God is able, but in the midst of him moving, moving, with Jarius, what I love about this is when he shows up on the scene, 
there are multitudes thronging him. See, you ever, see, this is why we need Jesus. Don't, we love the man of God that stands behind the pulpit. And God has placed him there. But have you ever tried to get to the pastor before and you can't? Because yeah. <laughs> everybody's thronging him. Yeah. There's so many needs in the church. But the job of the pastor, yes, our, our job as a preacher is to minister the gospel. But also to point you to Jesus yeah. so that you know the one Hallelujah. to run to in the time of need. were thronging him. Not just 30, not just 10, thousands of people were surrounding Jesus because they heard of the miracles that he was doing. And they seen the need and they ran towards the bank where he was arriving. Jarius got to him first. And sometimes we could feel like, well, Troy got there first. <laughs> Troy got to the altar first. I might as well not go. Mm. But God is able to meet everybody's oh, needs. Yes. Yes. Every, have you ever seen so many people come to the altar and you're just like, there's just not room for me? <laughs> I've got, listen, I've been there. I've been there where I was like, well, there's like 10 people up there. God, you can just meet me here in my seat. Mm. But God, God can meet you in your seat. But God wants us to exercise faith just like the woman with the issue of blood did just like Jarius just like the thousands of that heard the miracles that Jesus was performing and they ran ran to the banks to wait for him don't get discouraged in waiting on the banks because Jesus is going to show up Jesus is going to show up and when he does, he's going to work a miracle in your life. Whatever miracle you need this morning, he can meet Sabrina's need and everybody else's need at the same time. Because that's how powerful he is. But one thing about Jarius and this woman with the issue of blood is after they heard it, they were so desperate that they expected God to move. Like there was an anticipation in their heart that if he could do it for them, he could do it for me. Amen. It, God isn't a partial God. That's right. He doesn't do one thing for one person and not going to do it for you. He will do what he said he was going to do. That's right. That's so right. every lie that comes to your mind, bring it back to the truth of the word of God. But at this point, the word thronged, when the people were thronging Jesus, it meant that he was crowded on all sides, that he was compressed. That they were pressed together to the point of suffocation. Did you have you ever felt like your circumstance has just suffocated you? Yeah. And that you can't even take one more breath? But this woman, she knew she had to get to Jesus. It didn't matter what it took, she knew she had to get to Jesus. This certain woman had suffered for 12 years. Some of us have been going through some things. And you know what? Sometimes one day can feel like 12 years. <laughs> Sometimes you can feel like whatever it is that is pressing you has sucked 12 years of life out of you. I understand that. And so did Jesus. And this current issue, see this issue of blood that this woman was having, issue meant it was something current. There's something that has been going on that is still current in your life today that you're now facing. This was something that was going in her life at that, going on in her life at that moment. And she was in pain. Suffered means pain. 
Not just because of her illness, but because of her means of relief. Let me say that again. She wasn't just in pain because of her illness. She was in pain because of her means of relief. What she was running to to get relief from her current situation was also causing her more pain. See, in this situation, it's only Jesus that can do it. Right. right. It's only Jesus that can heal. It's only Jesus that can bring joy in the midst of sorrow. It's only Jesus that can cause anxiety to flee. It's only Jesus that can lift oppression. It's only Jesus that can heal. It's only Jesus that can deliver us from a certain state of mind. It's only Jesus that can break the back of sin and bondage that's been oppressing you. It's only Jesus that can bring peace in the midst of suffering. It's only Jesus that can do it. But she wasn't running to Jesus in the beginning. She was running to a bunch of physicians. And those physicians can make many things in our lives. They can be many sources of relief in our life. And I don't know at times what you might run to. But if it's not Jesus then it's not going to fix your problem. Amen. It's only going to get worse. Right. And this issue of blood ruptured continuously. It was a complete, sudden rupture all the time. Have you ever been doing really, really good and all of a sudden that same thing hits you again? Yeah, right, right. And you're doing good and you're walking along and the same thing hits you again. It's a sudden rupture that breaks you to your knees, that breaches your relationship with Jesus and breaches your relationships with others. It could be bitterness or unforgiveness. That plagues you or fear that stops you from moving forward in something or moving forward or doubt and unbelief that breaks that relationship with Jesus and you're not believing that he can. So then the grace of God cannot flow. But see this, this law that was, in, that was in play at that time called this lady unpure, unclean. And she wasn't even supposed to be near people, let alone be near Jesus. Sometimes things in our life can cause us to be separated from people, can cause us to be separated from the body of Christ, can cause us to be separated from God. And that's, see, but she didn't let whatever was plaguing her stop her from reaching the master because he was her only means of hope. Yes. See, Jesus can be our only means of hope. When you know, see, this woman, no one else could go around her. No one else was running in her circle. No one else could touch her. She was known as an outcast. Right, right. But she needed to get to Jesus. I love the Lord because he left the 99 to go after the one. He left the 99 to go after the one. Her problem wasn't too big. She wasn't too unclean that he didn't want to touch her. Oh, thank God for that. Thank God for that. When we see our lives, when we see our own hearts, when we see our own stinking thinking or our own mindsets or that what we think, God doesn't look at you and say, I'm done with him. Cast him aside. I'm done with her. Cast her aside. Oh, there she is again with the same old issue. Isn't she ever going to get it? No, he just says, come. Bring it to me. Press through. Bring it to me because I want to cause you to have relief. Yes. The Lord's been pressing on my heart and I want to present this before you is that people are going to know that we are Christians by our love. Yeah. Not by how many scriptures you quote. Because right. right. actually, Naya can attest to this. We have a personal testimony with one another. When we first became friends... And this was my own pride, too. So um, 
we first became friends, if I was going through something, Naya would begin to quote scripture at me. <laughs> and because that's what she knew. Yeah. Sometimes we need to hear the word of God. That's right. But I would turn to her and be like, stop preaching at me. Can you just give me a hug and tell me it's going to be okay? Like, that's what I needed. I just needed somebody to tell me you're going to get through it. It's going to be okay. I was like, I already know what you're saying. Come on, you ever had somebody come to you before and start telling you scripture and you're like, I already know that. I know that already. But God, God used that. But sometimes people don't need you quoting scripture at them. Sometimes they do. Sometimes you do need to speak the word of God in love, with the right spirit, not to prove them wrong, but to help lead them to the Lord. She didn't need to be told that she was unclean or that she was wrong. I was the queen of that when I was under a lot of law. I would always tell people how wrong they were. I, I was, as Naya, I was seriously, when Paul says he was the Pharisees of all Pharisees, she, she used to say, Angela, you are A plus material. <laughs> because I was trying to keep the law. And I would tell everybody how wrong they were. <laughs> and I was just telling Robert this story. My brother actually is a testimony of this. It was Christmas time, and I was just jamming scripture jamming scripture down his throat and he was broken and hurting and I was just telling him all the scriptures that came to mind and everything I I learned in the last four years I was going to get in in the next 10 minutes and he was going to get it and receive it and the Lord stopped me dead in my tracks and he said be quiet and I was like oh and he said love him in to the kingdom of God. Love him in to the kingdom. He doesn't need to hear all of that, Angela. He needs to be loved into the kingdom of God. And ever since that day, and not, I mean, in my relationship with the Lord, I just speak of the Lord naturally. But it wasn't like me trying to quote Genesis to Revelations and get him to get what I was getting. Now I just love him. My brother actually texted me last night, and we don't talk that often, but he told me how proud he was of me. And he said, I know that I have never said this to you before, but I'm really proud of you, and I ask you to forgive me. That, I mean, that might not seem like a big deal to you, but it was huge. I read that text at 4 o'clock in the morning, and I was just crying because that's a work of the Spirit. The yeah. Lord did that. That's it. Now, my brother, he'll probably say, you know, he came up with that all on his own. But the Lord, the Lord is drawing him. Right. But it wasn't because I quoted all the scripture I knew. It was because he's seen yeah. my 10 years of freedom of life. And he said, okay, something's good. It worked. Something right. worked. It's different. She's different from who she used to be. And it's because I loved. She didn't need to be told to go do this or that. Go. Why don't you go sit in the prayer closet and pray 10 hours and then maybe you'll get some deliverance. I used to feel like that. And sometimes it's just help me Jesus. Sometimes you just ball up on the floor and cry. And he hears the cry of your heart. Okay? You don't need to have to, to go and fast. 40 days and 40 nights and and fasting. I'm not taking away from those things. Those things are necessary. But sometimes we just go tell people, well, why don't you just go pray about that? (laughs) Why don't you grab their hand and pray for them? Because maybe they can't pray for themselves. I've been there. I I can't pray. Let's pray. I can't, I don't, some, I, sometimes I'm so, I be, have been, and I'll put myself out there, so frustrated with God, and I know that I'm wrong. Right, right. Okay, I know I'm wrong, and I'm angry with God. Mm-hmm. And I'm like, Naya, I can't pray. Mm. Pray, pray for me. Right, right. See, I didn't need Naya to say, Angela, get it together and go pray yourself. Right, right. Because we can do that. 
We can be very harsh as the body of Christ. Yes. And be like, oh, you have a need? Go pray about it. Be very arrogant in our approach. Mm -hmm. But God, help us to love. Yes, Lord. Help us to see the broken. Help us to see this woman with the issue yes. of blood. And Jesus didn't say, oh, I'm just going to go with Jairus. And there's so many other needs I need to meet. You know what? Sometimes we see somebody in need and we're so busy in life that we just pass it by. That's, that's true. We'll see people in church and somebody walk in the door and you know on their countenance that they don't look like they normally do. But I got 16 other million things I got to go take care of. So I'm just going to. And oh, well, I'll just pray in the car on the way home for them. Maybe they needed to hear your voice. Maybe they need. See, and I'm just telling you things that I've done. So I'm just putting myself right. out there, okay? Because I'm not acting like I got it all together because I definitely don't. But they will know we are Christians by our love. Amen. How, dude, we take the time to stop and love on each other. She needed a touch from Jesus. And there are things in our life that we might be struggling with that maybe even took place when we were children. And there's still wounds. Took place as we were teenagers. Mistakes that we, would, we made as adults or as parents or as grandparents. Burdens that we have carried for years upon years upon years. Pain that we haven't been able to get rid of. Bondages that haven't been yet um, broken. Bitterness that we haven't been yet relieved of. That's choking the life out of us. But deliverance and hope was on its way. Jesus died to set you free. So the fact that we can say and come in here and we pray and we say God's not going to do it. No, he died to do it. Therefore, it's his will. He died to heal you. Therefore, it's his will. He died to give you peace. Therefore, it's his will that you have peace. You have joy. He died to give it yeah. to you. Yeah. Yeah. But she ran to all these things. I wrote a list of things that I might have ran to in the past years for some sort of relief. Money. Right, right. Relationships. Sitting in your own emotions. Mm. Playing that video over and over again about how you're right and everybody else is wrong. Mm -hmm. Psychiatrists. Sometimes we try to move jobs. And I've, and I've been before I was saved to psychiatrists. It just gets worse and worse. Rehabs. Looking to other family members. Drugs. Prestige. Money. Power. Success. These are some things we can even run to friends at times. Right. Like, girl, did you hear what he did? <laughs> did you hear what Pastor Matt said at church? You know, and we look for some sort of relief from maybe the conviction that we felt under. And God was trying to deliver and to draw us. And this relief, when she went to these Physicians, it didn't get better, but it got more aggravated. When we try to fix things ourselves and not leave it in the hands of God and not run to Jesus, I guarantee you the problem's going to get worse and you're going to be more aggravated. And then we even try to go fix other people. Yeah. Well, God fixed me in that area, so I'm going to go help them get fixed. Or whatever the case may be. But then you get more aggravated because you can't fix them either. Yeah. And we just need to leave everything in That's the hands right. of God. And I don't, I don't mean do nothing. Because you can pray for them. That's and right. you can love on them. Yeah. And you can hold their hand and walk them through it. Because I needed someone to hold my hand and walk me through it. But don't think you can fix anyone. Because we can't. So we pray for them that they would get a touch of yeah. Jesus. Right. Just yeah. like we need a touch of Jesus. And just because we don't need a touch in this area anymore, and that doesn't make us better. Right. 
Okay, we all stand equal at the foot of the cross. Not one of us is better than the next. Hallelujah. And those that are strong in the faith should go and protect those that are weaker in the faith. And one day you might be weak and need someone to protect you. And she was all used up. She was spent. Have you ever been through something where you're completely used up? You used all your resources, all your emotions, all your mental state. You completely exhausted everything, your own strength, and everything you had in you. And now you feel completely spent. Well, that's the state that she found herself in. But she heard of Jesus. And she believed what she heard. See, you wouldn't be sitting here unless you believed. Right. You wouldn't be sitting here, even if it's your first time here, or you're not a, a believer, born-again believer yet, but you heard of Jesus, and something inside of you drew you to him, and you believed it. And when she heard, she came in the press. She didn't stay on the outskirts any longer. She didn't walk around the crowd and just say, how can I get to Jesus? She was like, I'm going straight in. I'm going in and I'm going to press until I touch him. For she said, if I may touch his clothes, I shall be whole. She recognized her condition and she recognized her need. And she said, I'm going to press in until I touch him. Yes. Not everything in life is going to be easy. That's right. yeah. Oh, yeah. But everything that's worth it, okay, we're going to have to press. Right. And we're going to have to believe God. And you access Christ by your faith. Yes. And the Holy Spirit is going to give you the grace yes. to press. Yes. So you're not alone in the press. Right. See, at that point with her, there was no Holy Spirit. There wasn't a Holy Spirit dwelling on the inside of her like we have now. So the Holy we have more. Yes. More than what she had at that time. Amen. But the Spirit of God was drawing her to Jesus. And she heard he was near and she believed that she could heal her. Her solution was in the midst. Her redemption was on its way. Her breakthrough was today. And she believed it. And I want to encourage you. Jesus is in the midst. Your breakthrough is today. And your redemption draws near. It was her desperateness for Jesus that caused her to press. Sometimes we're just not desperate enough to press. God help us and stir us to be desperate enough to press. Because we need him to move. She got so desperate that the implication was she was down on her hands and her knees. Imagine being, like the only thing I could think of really is a concert when all the people are pressed together. She got down on the ground and crawled through the people to get to Jesus. Could you imagine doing that? I bring you into an auditorium and I tell you the only way to, to be healed is to crawl through all the people to the stage. You, we can't even get out of our seats to come to the altar when it's clear. And this, this woman knew her need and she's like, I'm going to press. And that's the implication. It said she went. She didn't even say, I needed to look at Jesus face to face. Mm -hmm. That's us. Mm -hmm. We need to see you. And we do want to see him. We do. But she didn't even, that, none of that. If I could just touch his right. clothes. Right. Just a string from his garment. Just a tassel. Just one touch. That was her faith being exercised. Yeah, yeah. That's what our faith needs to be. Yeah. God, just one 
touch mm -hmm. and I will be made whole. But you know what we come face to face with sometimes? Fear, anxieties, doubt. She, she was really, she could have been ashamed. Like I'm dirty, I'm unclean according to law. According to law, she wasn't even supposed to touch him. Right. She wasn't even supposed to be in that area. And she was, she didn't care anymore. Hallelujah. And some got, listen, we've got church, we've got to get to that place where we don't care anymore what we look like, what people yes. think of us. It doesn't matter. I just need a touch of God. Yes, yes. If you need to kick, scream, ugly cry, whatever you need to do on the altar, get a touch from Jesus. Yes. In worship, get a touch from Jesus. Hallelujah. Get a touch from the Master. And there were crowds around him. And it says, the scripture says, For she said, if I may touch his clothes, I shall be made whole. The tassels which hung from Jesus' garment represented that their, their help was from above. It was a Jewish tradition that they wore these and the tassels meant that their help was from above and that's what she went to touch. Knowing that her help was from above and straight away it doesn't she say she went home with no help, no hope. It was straight away that the fountain of her blood was dried up and she felt in her body that she was healed of that plague. And Jesus immediately knowing in himself virtue had gone out from him. And about in the press and said, who touched my clothes? Immediately her issue of blood was staunched. That means immediately whatever she was dealing with was now healed, was now delivered. It is finished. It was now done. And she knew it. And he knew that virtue had gone out. It was a complete permanent action it was permanent what God does in your life in your family in this church is permanent and it's an eternal work you can't get that anywhere else but besides accessing and touching Jesus by faith we need to lay hold of the word of God of the truth of God of the spirit of God of the freedom and that has been afforded to you at Calvary and touch him. Yes, yes. I, and you know what? Sometimes it takes a group to do that. Mm, that's good, sure. Myself, I, um, I had hepatitis C from continuous drug use. And I think I might have told this story before. I don't know. But I was in a worship service. And my heart was to be healed. And I wanted God to heal me. But I'll tell you this, I really, at that time, I really didn't believe that, like, God was going to heal me. I didn't. But I just cried out anyway. God touched me. God healed me. I was on my first two weeks of interferon, and it makes you very, very sick when you take this medication. I was completely weak. And for somebody that, I mean, for the most part, feels strong at times in their body, I was drained. And I stood in this worship service in New Jersey and I began to worship the Lord. And this lady, Miss Carolyn Ross, and thank God for women God, that love God, that are older in the faith, that we can glean from. As mothers in the church, we should be able to glean from the mothers in the church. And she turned and she laid her hands on me and it was felt like literal fire. Mm -hmm. Yes. And then a couple of the other girls came around and laid yes. their hands on me. And it literally felt like fire was burning up in my belly. And the hepatitis C, I went back to the doctor, I think it was a week later, and he said, your hepatitis C is completely undetectable. It was a permanent action. And he said, I've never seen this. Ever. 
Yeah. And I said, well, it's Jesus. Yeah. And he just looked at me and I said, Jesus yeah. did this. Not the interferon, yeah. not anything that you could hit as a physician right. he could right. do. And he was a really good doctor. But he would just look at me with his head gone. <laughs> and I'm like, and I pray to God that one day he remembers that it was yeah. just yeah. Jesus. Yeah. That it was just Jesus. Jesus is able to heal. He's able to deliver. And I knew. And I'll tell you the truth. I never even went back for my uh, last six month checkup. Because I knew that Jesus had done it. Yes. And she knew. Right, right. She knew that when she touched the hem of his, or his garment, that virtue, yes. power, miraculous, dunamis power had flowed from Jesus Christ himself. She had touched him. She had touched him. So this endless whipping and scourging that she had been going through day in and day out for 12 years of her life was finally over. Was finally over. God is able to deliver you this day from whatever has been draining the life out of you for the last day, for the last years, for the last months. I don't know how long it's been whatever your thing is that has been trying to suck the faith out of you. Today is the day that God is going to make you whole. So we need to do something as believers. A believer believes. And when we believe, we pray. And when we believe, we worship him. Why? Not because it's law, but because we believers and we believe him. We believe him. And she touched him. It was a point of contact. Even though she was tired. Even though no one else cared about her. Even though she was an outcast. Emotions, people, places, things, our own ideas will keep us yes. from what God wants to do right. in our lives. So you need to press through the crowd yes. of the emotions yes. of your heart yes. and your own ideas and our own thinking and other people's opinions and other people's thinking. Yes. And we need to press into Jesus that he can make us whole. Naya, if you would please come up. It says, the scripture says, and Jesus immediately knowing in himself that virtue had gone out of him, turned him about in the press, in the crushing, and said, who touched my clothes? He wanted to acknowledge the very woman who had touched him. Why? Because he was building a testimony in this. The crowd was standing around and he acknowledged and recognized this one woman. Even on the way to healing this man of God, this Orthodox Jew daughter, he was going to raise her up. He was still in the business of working and going to raise her up. But he stopped to acknowledge the woman who touched him. And if you would please stand with me. Thank you, Jesus. I don't know Thank you, Lord. what you've been going through, but I know that I know that I know that God wants to make us whole. And he wants to touch you today. He wants us to touch him by faith, and he wants his virtue to flow. And this woman, after it happened, fell down before Jesus. And he didn't call her woman anymore. Yes. He called her daughter. Yes. See, you are a daughter of the king. You are a son of God. And he wants to heal you today. Yes. And he told her to go in peace Lord. and be whole. Go into peace. He wants you to go into peace. Yeah. This 
morning. Hallelujah. When God has provided.